I'm Robert Fox, Associate Chair of the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Florida. In our department, we are now using the National Instruments Digital Analog Discovery in most of our labs. All of our students are required to buy these boards, which reduces our needs for permanent lab equipment. Students receive a parts kit for each course, paid for by lab fees. In many labs, we require the students to complete much of the work at home before they come to lab. We find that this allows the students to spend less of their in-lab time on debugging and more on learning and exploring. This frees up time and space in the labs, although it requires a lot of debugging help from the teaching assistants outside of lab. To make sure that the students have their experimental setups working before they get to lab, we have to apply strict penalties for failing to come to lab prepared. We recently revised our ECE curriculum to allow much greater flexibility in choosing electives. Students choose from a list of nine breadth courses, all with embedded labs. This puts a premium on lab space and time that the analog discovery boards help to alleviate. But it makes it even more important that our lower level required classes, with or without embedded labs, provide as many practical skills as possible. Responsibility has fallen on me to increase the value of these required classes and labs. It has proven to be quite a challenge. My favorite lab example is this second order audio universal filter. Like an analog computer, the circuit directly maps circuit blocks to the terms of a second order differential equation. Students can make direct conceptual connections between the equation, the schematic, and the hardware implementation. The circuit simultaneously implements low pass, band pass, high pass, and notch outputs. The filter Q and center frequency are independently adjustable. The circuit, implemented either on a breadboard or on a cheap PC board, can be assembled by the students or can be pre-assembled. With different emphases, this circuit can be used in our Circuits 2 class, in our Electronics class, or in the audio engineering class that I'm teaching this summer. The filter exploits many features of the analog discovery. We use the oscilloscope to illustrate the effect of changing the damping. The network analyzer shows the frequency responses for various filter outputs. Selected filter outputs can also be sent to loudspeakers so that students can hear the effects as well as see them. High Q filters can be swept to select individual harmonics of various outputs of the built-in waveform generator. Setting the scope in XY mode with quadrature outputs allows students to indulge their artistic tendencies. My biggest pedagogic issue is how and whether to incorporate circuits such as this one into non-lab-based classes. Integrating these ideas into our classes is an ongoing challenge. I'm hoping that this NI Week workshop will help me figure out the best ways to get these ideas to work.